Well, hello. This is, welcome to the uh, Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast. I'll spit it out here real quick. Uh, Dave Shyak, the associate head coach of the St. Cloud State men's hockey team, is my guest here this week. And uh, Dave, uh, big week, obviously, for for, for you guys, uh, the Gophers uh, with a home-and-home home series. Uh, I, I would imagine they're you don't have to uh, do much to get the guys all riled up about this this weekend, huh? No, I, I think the guys are excited. Uh, our fans are excited. Community is excited. It's always great uh, to have the Gophers come to our building. And, uh, you know, it's a big series for, for both programs to kind of start the second half here. And uh, our guys had a bit of a longer break than normal, Mick, as you well know. Uh, but it's, we've kind of had kind of a mini second camp and, uh, the guys are live and our practices have been good. And, uh, we're just sharpening up our focus, getting ready for the game here on Saturday. Yeah. Let's talk about the, you know, the break and how you guys kind of handle that. Uh, because I, I don't think, you know, people necessarily realize, okay, well, what, what all kind of goes into it and, where to get, you know, how do you deal with guys going home and that sort of thing? So, you, uh, you know, your, your last series was, was against Miami, uh, you know, and then obviously the, the holiday was coming up and stuff. Uh, do, do, you know, how, how, how much time, I guess, did the guys get off from, uh, you know, from, from uh, school and everything else here? I think they had a good nine, 10 days off, Mick, which was, which, which we feel is real important for these kids. They need, to be with their family and friends. They need a mental break from us as coaches and the game itself, mental break from their academics, just to get recharged and refresh and just enjoy the holidays. And uh, our guys certainly did that. They got back, I believe on the night of the 27th, got a little skate and we started on the 28th. Um, the one thing that we did, we threw in there is the exhibition game against my, uh, sorry, Manitoba. And we thought that was important just to get a game in to get some of the rust and dust off our game. Um, so it was good. Uh, they, they played a hard and heavy game and we were able to look at certain aspects of our game and get some video on that and kind of retrain the brain to, to get to where we need to be on top of our game to prepare for Minnesota. Yeah. With, uh, you, you know, when, when they go home, do you, do you tell these guys specifically, Hey, listen, stay off the ice for a couple of days or, or you do, do you not have to do that? Uh, you know, some of these guys I know are, are, are you know, it's hard to keep them off the ice. Honestly. I mean, I, I've heard that complaint, you know, before that some of these guys just don't know how to take a break. Other guys, of course, are, are, are pretty good about it. Yeah. I mean, it's for them to enjoy, and uh, we're not going to tell them not to skate. We just go home and, and uh, enjoy it with your family and friends. All the guys take their equipment home, so if they get a chance to go outside and, and play pond hockey or get a couple skates, uh, that's that's totally up to them. And, you know, you were around here, most of the Minnesota kids, you couldn't get outdoors because there's four feet of snow, <laughs> and you weren't skating outside. So it's just a time to relax, refresh, get recharged, enjoy it a little bit. And then that's part of coming back. It's it's our jobs to get them back into game conditioning, get them up to speed once they get here. And, you know, that break, that first day back, the guys are going 100 miles an hour because they're excited to be back amongst their teammates and be back on the ice and get ready to prepare for some games in the second half here. Yeah. Uh, you know, with that, uh, you know, how, how, how have you guys kind of gone about that? Uh, you know, since once you did get back, uh, you know, have, have you gone real, did you go real hard, I guess, for a few days, just to kind of, again, uh, you're mentioning in the conditioning side of it, that, you know, you, do you have to kind of go hard for a few days just to kind of get the legs moving again or. Yeah. I think the first couple of days there, Mick, we don't want to do a lot of stopping and starting because the body's not used to it. Mm -hmm. A little bit more high pace flow, uh, get puck touches, get that sharpness back because you don't want to do too much too early or else you get some soreness, you get some groin pulls, some muscle aches and stuff like that. So you got to ease into it, taper it off, then get back to, into doing some grunt work. So after about three, you know, three days or so, you, you get into some body contact. So they get used to that uh, more game, like more game conditions just to get them kind of fine tune, ready to go. And I think that's what the, the, the Manitoba Dane did. We got some body contact. It got physical at times. And that's all part of your preparation, getting ready for the Gophers. 
Yeah. Uh, and another positive, uh, you know, out of that Manitoba game was uh, the return of Spencer Meyer. And uh, well, just kind of give us a, a little bit of a feel, uh, you know, how do you feel like uh, Spencer looked out there and, and how's he doing health wise? No, he took a lot of time off. He, he tried to kind of tolerate the, the pain discomfort early uh, for the few four. I can't remember how many games you would know him there, Mick. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the doctors are the athletic trainers and the coaches discussed it with him. If it's going to be like this the rest of the year, it's cer certainly going to hinder your performance or quality of performance on the ice. So let's let's take as much time as you need to get back to close to hundred percent. And he did that. And I actually thought he, we, 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 as a group and we, as a staff thought he played very well in that Manitoba series. Uh, he didn't look out of place. He didn't look rusty. And obviously he's one of the hardest working guys on our team and does all the right things. And we're certainly glad to have him back. Yeah. You know, to, you know, obviously, I mean, we were talking a big, big weekend coming up uh, to have your captain back. Uh, you know, is that a big boost for you guys, I guess, just to have him for this series? Oh, for sure. Uh, not just on the ice, because he plays in all situations. Very good on the power play, very good puck mover, obviously plays the PK. So that's important. But just like you said, more importantly, he's great in the locker room. He's such a positive influence, does everything the right way. Just having him there in the locker room and on the bench during the games is going to be critically important for us moving forward. Yeah. Uh, now, one guy who right now is is has been playing a lot of hockey here on the uh, on the break is is, is Jack Piart uh, with with Team USA. Uh, you know what what's it uh, what's been like kind of watching Jack uh, play here in the World Junior Championships? I think it's, we we think it's been outstanding. It's awesome. We're cheering for him. Obviously, big game today against Canada in Canada. He's played really well over there. He's certainly he's playing 18, 19 minutes a game. Mm -hmm. So he's got, he's logging more minutes than he did last year. So he got that experience from last year and uh, he's, he's doing a lot of penalty kill, obviously playing five on five and it can only give him more confidence and to represent your country, you're at an all time high and uh, it's real fun watching him. I know our guys will be watching him today. We have been watching all his games. So we're cheering for him and we're hoping that he gets by Canada today and gets a chance to play for the gold. Uh, you know, give, give, give us a, you know, from your standpoint, watching him last season versus this season, what, what are some differences maybe in him this season versus last season? Cause he, he seems to be, be taking it up a, a, another level here for him. Obviously his puck moving ability is his greatest asset. He, he sees the ice very well. He's very good on his breakouts, very good on his transition play. He's just not a first pass option guy. He can see the second option or the third option, but the the part of the game that he's gotten a lot better at and he needs to continue to improve is his defensive play. His, his rush reads are better, his gaps are better, his box outs and his board play. And he's been working on that. And uh, that's given him the opportunity to play more minutes this year, uh, a little bit on PK, obviously, and uh, has extended his minutes. I think he's playing close to 20 minutes a game for us right now, and he's able to handle that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I know something that uh, he told me that, uh, you know, you guys as a, as a coaching staff talk with him about is, is just finding, maybe finding some more ways to, to, to get pucks on net. Uh, and if you look at his shots, uh, you, his shots are way up over last season. So, I mean, he, he is finding ways to, to get, he's actually finding ways to get to the net a, a little bit more, I think. And, 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 to find seams and, and, you know, get shots through. Is that, do you see the same thing, Dave? Or? Yeah, no, we talk about that. He's, uh, he's more of a, a pass first guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we are working on more deception plays, walking the blue line. And he, he's real good at keeping his head up. And now he's getting to buy the first layer or finding stick blades to create some offense uh, around the net or chaos around the net. And it's, it's something that we work on every day. And he's certainly getting a lot better at that. And, you know, he's got, like I said, the extended minutes for opportunity uh, to be put in situations where he has the puck on his stick blade to get more pucks to the net. And as we're recording this, as, as you're mentioning, uh, Canada getting ready to play the U.S. and in the semifinals, uh, obviously you're pulling for Jack, but now, now you're Canadian though. There's a number of Canadians on this team. Now, are, are you guys, are you guys split here uh, as to who you're rooting for or, or what's the vibe on that? 
Well, first of all, I'm a dual citizen. I'm a, I'm a U.S. citizen. I've been for 10 years now. Max. Okay. So I'm, 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 I'm cheering for Purdy, obviously, and would love to see him win the gold. And yes, we do have some Canadians in the locker room and Oka, with, you know, Okabe leading the troops there for sure. <laughs> He's a proud Canadian from Alberta, but uh, I think he'll be cheering for his, uh, for his teammate as well. But you know what? It's a great stage. It's one of the best tournaments in the world. Uh, and it's in Canada, obviously, be a packed house. And for him to play at that stage, obviously, we'd like to see him do well. And I think it's, is it 5.30 Eastern time the game's on tonight? Yeah, Mick? So, yeah. so our guys are doing a couple things today. I, I'm sure they're getting together for that. And uh, and then they're going to see uh, their other teammate, Pervy, play for Tampa Bay in, in, against the Wild there tonight. So, uh, and you know this, we've got a great culture here. Our guys love each other. They'll be supporting, obviously, per, per, uh, Purdy. And uh, then obviously going over down to the Twin Cities there, the XL to, uh, to support Kirby for his first game back in the state there. So uh, awesome day for, for Husky hockey. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Nick, Nick Perbix, uh, you know, playing for the Tampa Bay lightning actually just signed a, a, a contract, a, a two-year contract uh, here with, with the lightning. Uh, what a, what a great start uh, for, for his season. Uh, and I was, I was talking with Brett about this a little bit yesterday. I mean, we're not talking that he's, he's playing on, uh, on one of the bottom end teams in the, in the NHL. This is the lightning who have won, you know, two out of the last three, uh, Stanley cups. Uh, what's it been like, uh, you know, I, I know you guys are following him pretty closely. Uh, you know, what, what's it been like just seeing uh, Nick kind of settle in, uh, uh, on a great team. It's it, to be honest with you, and I think Kirby would tell you the same thing. It's it's hard to absorb. Obviously, he was with our group last year, but it's a credit to to Kirby. He he did things the right way. Uh, he was patient throughout his his four years here. He had the opportunity. Maybe discuss this with with uh, with, with Coach Larson. There is he could have signed after his junior year, but he knew he needed another year of development, more so mentally to better prepare him. Uh, for, for uh, professional hockey. And then at the end of the year, obviously he got some pro games in with Syracuse and he used that as a springboard and some confidence leading into this season. He didn't make the main roster out of camp. They ran into some injuries and then he plugged them in and every game he got better. And mm -hmm. to watch him on TV right now, it's just awesome because he's, he's breeding confidence. He's getting better by the game, getting used to pro hockey and they love him. Uh, he's a six foot four right shot skating defenseman, which is a need for most NHL teams. Mm -hmm. So he's did the most with his opportunity. And you know what? We're super excited. They needed him. He's a big piece of the puzzle moving forward. And that's why they're pretty quick to, to get that two year deal done and not wait until the end of the year. Yeah. What, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, you, you weren't part of the recruiting process or anything else. So, I mean, when, when, when you came in uh, to, to this program, uh, you got a chance though, to work a, an awful lot with, with Nick. Uh, what, what are things that, you know, have st stand out, I guess, for you with, you know, not, not only with him on the ice, but I mean, also off the ice. I mean, what, what are things that stand out for you about Nick? Well, uh, first of all, his puck poise and patient with the puck is, is really good. I think that's why he got drafted in the first place, along with the size and, and, and length and his ability to skate, but his puck poise and patient with the puck, what that leads to is breaking four check pressure on breakouts and exits. I think he's real good with that. He's real good again with his transition passes and he creates offense. He creates offense in the ozone. He uses that, his uh, athleticism to create space and make plays in the ozone. And that's what he's real good at. Uh, and you saw him last year, he could take games over and be the best player on the ice for both teams. And, and for Burby, he needed to just do that a little bit more consistently and we thought he progressed very well in his last two years as a junior and senior to better prepare him for for the next level, which is the pro level. And then off the ice, he's just kind of a, a funny kind of laid back personality. He's real athletic. He's one of those guys that can pick up, you know, a ping pong racket and be good at that. He's really good at golf. Um, it seems like anything he does, he's real good at. And that's obviously a great trait to have. But a coachable kid, wanted to get better. Certainly had pro aspirations, wanted to help us win championships. Uh, just a real good teammate to, to have around and real enjoyable as a coach. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's one, yeah, you're mentioning uh, he, he's got kind of a neat 
sense of humor, but it's it's kind of like uh, him out on the ice, right? I mean, uh, you know, when when you watch him, you sit there and you're, you're, it's not like a ton of spin moves and all this other stuff. It's a lot of really subtle things, and and, and that's kind of his personality all the way through. It seems like. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're right. The, the normal fan doesn't notice some of those little intricate plays that he can make in small spaces that are hard to do if you don't have that mm-hmm. athleticism. And he makes it look easy and, and natural, but he plays the game very well instinctively like that. And, you know, he does have that funny sense of uh, humor. Like he, we had of our pregame meals, as you well know here, he mm-hmm. can get a little picky. He'll go to Chipotle and have Chipotle. <laughs> and it's funny, I was reading the comments and you probably read them too now uh is is he gets treated a little bit probably better in tampa bay now they have the sushi bar and he was joking about that he was having sushi at, at games all the time whereas he didn't have that here at st cloud <laughs> <laughs> uh you know with, you know with uh you know with this defensive core uh you know that that you're playing with this season you know what one of the things uh you know that we thought going into the season was that was going to be one of the strengths of this team. Uh, you know, we're halfway through the season, I guess, kind of give us a, a, a snapshot of, of this team defensively and how you feel, I guess, the this team is playing defensively. Yeah, obviously we started off real well. And uh, you're, you're right that that's a strength of our team. Our, we can certainly move pucks. Uh, we can do th- things offensively because of our skating ability and skill. Um, we wanted to get a little bit more consistent in our defensive play, mm-hmm. specifically our, 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 our rush defense and gaps. So we don't have to play in the D zone um, and a little bit harder in front of the net on our board plays. And we did that. We we've, we've did that uh, through our first 18 games here. Or so uh, we know it's going to get tougher in the second half. The ice gets tighter. The game gets harder. So we have to become more consistent on the defensive side of the puck. And when we do that, that means we're going to have the puck uh, a lot more and we won't have to defend as much. And if we don't have to defend as much, we're not exerting energy in our own zone. We have more energy to go play with the puck and uh, create some offense. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the Gophers, uh, obviously if, if particularly if all these guys are, are going to be playing this weekend off of, of the world juniors team, obviously uh, is this as talented a, a, an offensive group as you guys have seen this year? I would think so. For sure. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, or we think their decor is the best in the nation. Very mobile, very good puck movers, very good offensively. And they're deep uh, up front. They're deep. They got four lines that can score. They can come at you in waves if you allow them to. Uh, but they're number one for a reason right now. And uh, they've got a target on the back and they've been handling it quite well. Uh, and it's our job to make life a little bit tougher on them. And a big part of that, nobody knows, everybody knows, sorry, is you got to manage the puck, take care of the puck and force them to defend. And uh, easier said than done. Uh, I'm sure that's the game plan for most teams that are playing against them. Uh, But we're excited about it. And we we know the strengths of their games and it hasn't changed for, for a lot of years, but this, this team they have this year is pretty darn deep and uh, you can't give them, the easy looks at the net, you can't give them easy offense. So we got to make it uh, a little bit more difficult for them to create offense. Well, and and uh, Brett was kind of joking about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, uh, this is a team you want to stay out of the penalty box against in particular, right? Yeah, that's another part of their offensive game plan, obviously, is their power play creates offense. Their rush offense is very good because uh, they can attack with you know all four or five guys a vice and then you can't turn pucks over because their transition's real good and we have to be disciplined in our approach we want to be hard to play against but we can't have seven or eight penalties like we did against manitoba or exhibition game there mick yeah uh let's talk a little bit about uh you know uh, uh, dylan anhorn uh, as we're sitting here i i think or the last time i looked uh, I, I think he was leading the the nation's defenseman in in assists uh uh, boy, just talk uh, about what he's added uh, to to your group this season. Yeah, we talked we talked earlier about him, uh, and uh, he's really given us a, a, an added dimension. What I mean by that, we knew that he was a very good player coming in. We're excited to get him. Uh, he was strong on both sides of the puck, but he's got a, a, a dynamic piece to his game offensively. And it, it's just starting to come into fruition here, probably the last 
six to eight games where he can dance in the ozone. He can transport the puck. He can do some things on the power play that we really weren't aware of uh, mm-hmm. that he's demonstrating right now. And kudos to him. And he continues to get better. He's very coachable. He wants to get better. Uh, his practice habits are good. He's a good teammate. Uh, like I said, he's, he's, he's one of those guys when we first got him, uh, we're halfway through the season and we, we, you know, we, like you said, we wouldn't know he would be leading the nation and scoring right now in saying that he's got to continue to be consistent and carry, carry, carry that same load, uh, when the, when the game gets harder. Yeah. Well, and, and, uh, I, I think one of the things too, that you guys have been pleasantly surprised with was, I mean, I think you thought he was a good defender, but I mean, I, I think he's, I mean, he's been on your top defensive pairing an awful lot and there's, there's been a reason. And it's not just because it was an offense has it been. Well, what you want is the coach's reliability and with him and Letty together, they give us that they they're, they're, they're playing 20 plus minutes a game. They're in all situations, power play, penalty kill, four on four when the game's on the line they're out and in in order to get that trust and reliability you got to be strong defensively he's got a good stick good mind for the game structurally he's real good and uh but he's deserved it and he's earned it and uh like i said that 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 pairing has been real valuable for us yeah Uh, uh, josh obviously had the the uh well, the, the, the very scary uh, thing at the very beginning of the season, that first game of the season where he got, got injured. Uh, but, boy, since he's been back, it doesn't look like uh, he t- has taken a step back. I mean, uh, what, what have you seen on Josh Lickey here? No, he's obviously we're, we're super excited he's back. Uh, he had that unfortunate injury first game. And he was actually injured before that leading up to camp there, Nick. So he's had to deal with some adversity here mm-hmm. in the front half of this season. But since he's been back, uh, he, he's been good. But I, we actually think there's another level there. And he does, too, to get that consistency. Um, and sometimes you're playing catch up when you have back to back injuries like that. But he's close to where he needs to be. He, he works extremely hard off the ice, extremely hard on the ice. Uh, we're happy to have him back. Uh, there's, there's more to Josh and we've seen it last year and he's had some really good games this year. Uh, but we, we certainly think there's another level to his game. Yeah. Uh, with, with the world juniors, uh, kind of, kind of getting, uh, wrapping up here this week, uh, two guys that are, have signed to, to, to play for you guys have, uh, played in the, in the world junior championships, uh, Werner Mietnan, obviously with Finland and, and Martin Slavins with, uh, with, with Latvia, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, did you guys kind of find those two guys roughly at about the same time, I guess, when you're out on the recruiting trail? Uh, I, I believe we got uh, we got Marty Lavins earlier. I think we got him earlier, and it was just a matter of time because obviously we had uh, Vidi here. We knew Aiden's brother. Then it was shortly, shortly after that. It was just kind of going through the recruiting process with, with Vernon. It was, it, was it was during the COVID year, too, so it's a little bit different. We didn't uh, – uh, we knew about him, obviously built that relationship with him and obviously liked the, the intangibles that they brought to the table uh, when we recruited him. So I think we got Marty first and, 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 and then uh, Werner shortly after that. Um, Marty's playing in the second season in Cedar Rapids. Uh, w- when you look at Marty, I guess, what are, what are the things that, that obviously you guys like about him? What are the things that you guys like? Energy and hardness. He, he, yeah. he, he plays the game at 100%. There's no, there's no, there's no uh, stoplight in his game. He's go, 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 go. And he plays hard. He plays heavy, tough guy to play against uh, real good on face-offs. Uh, you know, he does a lot of the good things, right. And his offensive game is starting to come around this year as a second year guy in Cedar. Um, and then with, 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 with Werner uh, high end skill, real good on the face-off dot can make plays, uh, He's continued. He's got to get stronger, and he's aware of that. He doesn't have any of his man strength yet, but high, high, high offensive hockey IQ and real good on the power play, real good on the faceoff dot as well. Yeah, uh, I, I just want to bring this up, uh, you know, just because uh, you know you and I kind of exchanged uh, some text messages, uh, unfortunately over the break. Uh, you know, uh, Charlie Boyk, uh, who, who played for the St. Cloud Crush, uh, uh, w- w- was killed in a car accident. Uh, one of the one of the cool things was that 
Uh, there, there was a game uh, against Cathedral over the, over the uh, over in the last week here, and all of the St. Cloud State men's and women's hockey teams uh, were there uh, to show support for the family. Uh, I, I know your son, uh, Sheldon, uh, played with yeah. Charlie, and uh, you know how, how's your how's your son doing? And you know how how are things going? I guess just uh, you know you know with the team and everything else. Yeah. You know, a uh, tragic, tragic loss to, to the to the family, Jeff and Erica, tragic loss to the hockey community. They're big Husky supporters. They just love hockey in general. Mm -hmm. uh, they're engaged in the community. They do a lot of things. And uh, you know what? We're, we're such a family knit community here in St. Cloud. And the hockey community really brought things together. And uh, you know what, Charlie, you think about the good things. Um, and they did a lot of they did a lot of things. He's such a, he was a happy, go lucky guy. They just love the game being around his teammates and, and doing whatever he can to help his team win. And, uh, you know, Jeff and Erica wanted, you know, our, our, our team to be part of this as well. Um, so we helped out in any way we possibly could. And what, a, and you were there, Mick, what a, what a tremendous event the community put on for the game against cathedral. They're unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, and you know what the team is, Teams did a lot of good things. They didn't know how to handle it early. Uh, a lot of support from one another, a lot of support with the school counselors and psychologists. And then they had a practice one day and they, they kind of accepted it and just wanted to celebrate some of the things that Charlie brought brought to them. And uh, and that's why they call it a celebration of life. And and he'll be remembered forever. And, you know, I talked to Jeff quite a bit, actually, the last couple of weeks. And one of the things in just for people listening is, what he's doing to just to keep his memory alive and keep him skating. It's Charlie skate free is those stickers that they're putting. He's, well, he wants to get all those stickers on every, every possible Zamboni across, across North America. And I think he's at probably 70 right now and get a picture of it. And then he's going to put a, uh, uh, he's going to have a big map and put a pin on it for all the Zambonis with Charlie sticker on it. So uh, tremendous loss for the family and the community and uh we're giving them nothing but love and support yeah and uh yeah it, it it was it was an amazing thing i mean and, and you realize how close uh people in the in the hockey community are and I, I mean uh, you you know that it's there but holy smokes it was on full display uh after after that game uh, just to see all the support the number of people that showed up for that game uh, it, was, it was just uh it was a really nice tribute uh, to, to that family and to show their uh, the support. So I, I just want to give people uh, give those everyone a shout out with the Crush and the Crusaders and uh, and also the St. Cloud State for for uh, showing up and and uh, supporting everybody. Yep, yep, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Really appreciate your time, Dave. As always, uh, best of luck here this weekend. Uh, try and uh, shovel out <laughs> like uh, like yeah. the of us, and uh, good luck this weekend against Gophers. Let's get everybody out to that game on Saturday. We want to make it the loudest building in the nation Saturday night because it's going to be a heck of a match matchup. And uh, stay warm. Hopefully, you have a shovel or a snowboard, and uh, we'll see everybody on Saturday. Thanks, All right. mate. This has been the Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast and Mick Hatton. We'll catch up with you next week.